I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody takes the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. Boys, I swear, I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. Someone seen you go in there, and then two hours after your story airs, that police are at both of these establishments. More controversy in South Suburban Dalton. Two popular bars shut down by police just hours after the owners talked to Fox 32. A village trustee also says it's because they're not financially supporting Dalton's mayor, Tiffany Henyard. Here's Dean Placa with the latest on the corruption investigation. Is it coincidence or retaliation? Both of the Dalton bars that were raided and shut down last night, we visited the day before as part of our ongoing investigation into allegations of political corruption in Dalton. They just rushed in here, put police at the front of the door like they was doing a raid on the drug house or something. A team of Dalton police officers raided and shut down Pablo's Bar and Cafe and Rinky's Bar and Cafe, both located on Sibley about a block apart. Everything going peacefully, nothing going on. There's like 10 police cars came in and they start pushing customers from here. And he said, if you don't leave, we're going to lock you up. Employees and owners say it's part of an ongoing campaign of harassment by Dalton Mayor Tiffany Henyard that is costing jobs and money. Their business here? licenses have been stripped by Dalton, but they've continued to operate with a state license. I have like over 23 employees. They work from the local township. Now, end of the day, all the employees, they're going to lose them job. It's ridiculous. We all have mouths to feed. We all have kids. Um, they are not giving us no explanation. On Monday, we visited both Rinkies and Pablos to ask about allegations their licenses were being held up for political reasons. Then last evening, we broke the story that FBI agents have questioned at least a half dozen people, including business owners, a former Dalton employee, and an elected official as part of an investigation into Mayor Henyard. Less than two hours after our story aired, police raided the two bars. Someone seen you go in there, and then two hours after your story airs, that police are at both of these establishments. Dalton trustee Tammy Brown says she believes the raids are meant to send a warning to others not to talk. And she believes there's a reason so many Dalton businesses are having trouble getting their licenses renewed. I'm sure that they were asked to donate, make a donation. And most likely, they didn't make a donation. So you don't get a chance to stay open if you don't pay, pay the Queen's ransom. Now, tomorrow evening, there will be a special public meeting of the trustees opposed to the mayor in which they plan to take action on the village's finances. Getting access to Village Hall, they've been locked out and welcoming that investigation by federal agencies. Dane Placco, Fox 32, Chicago. Good evening, Mayor, trustees, residents. My name is George Messi, the owner of Pablo's Cafe and Bar, located on 1115 East Sibley. Just a little background. I was the owner of Dalton Food and Liquor since 1992, the store across the street from this village hall. Until 2017, I was in that store for over 22, 23 years. My record always been clean with the police department, with the village. I never had an underage ticket. I left that place in 2017, and I came back to Dalton in 2020 during COVID. 
I got my tavern license from the previous administration. So I opened the place on Sibley. And since day one, safety was the priority for that location. Every night we have multiple security. You go in, you leave, they search you every time you walk in the place. 2021, 2022, village renewed my license, no problem. I got my license first week of May. This year, I gave them all my paperwork in April. The license due April 30th. My liquor state license valid until 2024. My gaming from the Illinois Gaming Board valid until 2024. So I kept go back and forth to this village hall almost every single day. Mr. Freeman, he see me, he see my wife. We're here every single day, May, June, no answer. Right after 4th of July, July 5th at 6 p.m., the police came. They said, we have to shut you down for not having a local license. You have all my paperwork since April. I'm waiting on you to get my license. You're the one who holding it. So I'm just asking the mayor, the trustees, please, when can I have a definite answer to get my license and get this place back open? Between DJs, security, bartenders, we have over 25 employees. Lord, have mercy. Happens all the time. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, uh, Council, uh, worthy trustees, and I have to congratulate you. This is my 123rd town hall meeting, first time ever coming to this city hall and uh, this close to this city. Uh, today I came to the city to check on the status of a business application, business renewal for a friend of mine. And I met, first time I walked through these doors, I am super impressed with this town. You should all be proud of yourselves. 99.99999999% of Americans do not know about these meetings and do not care enough to attend these meetings, yet we expect these folks to be perfect and do their job. I'm one of these people that grew up, 90s and early 2000s, looking at Mr. Holmes and being inspired to fight for my people like Mr. Holmes does big up, sir. Uh, what brings me here today, I just learned of this meeting a couple hours ago, when I met uh, Mr. Moore, Mr. William Moore, to check on the status for business renewal for 44 Sibley Boulevard. This is the Sidgo gas station. Uh, Mr. John Matthew, good friend of mine, is going through a dire situation there where his business license, like all the other business licenses, expired April 30th of this year. On April 4th, uh, Mr. Matthew applied for the renewal of this uh, alcohol beverage license and his general business license. And to this day, the renewal has not been granted. Uh, Mr. Uh, Moore, who was very professional, very courteous, and came across as very compassionate and caring about this particular issue, when I explained to him the suffrage, uh, not only uh, Mr. John Matthew, my friend, is going through, but the immediate community, uh, members of this community that have been patronizing this location for over a generation. Uh, Mr. Matthew is facing a critical shutdown of his doors very soon. Uh, not because uh, code enforcement gave him a bunch of tickets. No, as a matter of fact, he's got no tickets. Not because his grass wasn't cut. His grass is impeccable. No weeds anywhere. Uh, he was not charged with an ever ticketed for selling to minors or illegal contraband cigarettes or other issues that our communities face on a daily basis with crooked businessmen. This man has been an outstanding uh, citizen. I was wondering if there was a moratorium on renewal of business licenses or not. The reason for the potential shutdown, which would, will be coming very soon, is there is no inventory on this man's shelves as the business license expired because there's alcohol beverages being sold in this business. It is illegal for him to purchase anything. I have friends, I have people that I know, when this happens, they would go to their friend's store and get inventory from that. That would put them at such a risk to lose for their license forever. I ask this body, I came to make this community and this great body and this honorable mayor aware that this man is in a dire emergency situation of shutting his business. I bring some pamphlets along and my contact information. If we can please, we're not looking to get ahead of any line. We're just, or, or run in circles. It has been four, uh, going on four months. This 
license have expired, and if you can please help us in any way, if I may approach and hand these pamphlets out. Go get them. To the board, please. And to the yeah, board. you can give it to Medina. Thank you very much. My contact information. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Mm -mm. Honorable Mayor, I voted for you since 2013. Uh, big supporter of female. My question is to the trustees and you. As a businessman for 50 years, I want to know, is there a plan in place to recoup the financial loss that Dalton is going to hit as they're not having businesses can't operate. That's what I want to know to anybody. And I've heard five, six different stories, some for you, some against you. But as a businessman of 50 years, 80-year-old guy, all roads lead to one point. It don't make business sense. If a business can't operate, you do two bad things. You disrupt the community for meeting places that they like to go do business with. And more important, the revenue. So my thing basically is this. I'm a vet. I don't pay. If taxes go to a million dollars a day, I'm exempt. <laughs> okay? But I want to know, is there a game plan for the rest of the people that don't have my status to replace the revenues that the boss from businesses not operating because they don't have a license. That's me. That's that's it. And thank you much for your time. You're welcome. And I'm gonna respond just so everyone knows this um, for the public because people are just saying things that don't have facts. Um, everybody thinks uh, business license or if you're waiting on something dealing with liquor, alcohol is under review. So we will get back to everybody hopefully this week. Um, the attorney's working on everything, and we will let everybody know where they stand. Uh, whether we're renewing or not renewing or what your issues are. I do not and will not um, sit here and bash anybody or anybody's business. So if you know you owe money, if you know you need to fix things here with the village, please do that. Stop spreading things in the public and you know your stuff not tight. So all I can do is advise because I don't want to bust nobody out up here. I, all I can do is tell you fix your backyard. Because that is a reason for a lot of things, but I'm not going to do it publicly to embarrass any business owner. Because I, too, am a small business owner. I don't want nobody to do me like that. But don't tell lies when you know there's three more fingers pointing back at you. So all I can do is advise everybody to please, please uh, fix whatever the issues are and then come back to us. Um, it is under review, and you will know something as relates to the liquor license um, by the end of this week. Next. Good evening. Good evening. I'm here on behalf to speak of the Pablo's Bar and Calf. As many of y'all may know, I'm the head security guard up there. And that's my life. Like, that's the only thing I got right now. Mm -hmm. Like, Pablo's pulled me out the streets. Mm -hmm. It kept me from being out here hustling, selling drugs, doing all this other stuff. It pulled me out the street and gave me an honest living. Mm -hmm. It helped me send my son to prom just a couple of months ago. It brings revenue to the hotel because I'm staying in the hotel right now. As of 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, I have nowhere to go. I have no vehicle to move my things out. With this business being closed, it totally shot my life. Like, I'm 47 years old with arthritis. I, it's not much that I can do. And Pablo gave me a chance, as well as other employees that's here that we work for Pablo's. Like, I stand on Pablo's with an iron fist. I keep people from hanging out in the lot. I keep people from out and drinking in the lot. As anybody know anywhere, whether it's a, a, a bar, a club, a gas station, a restaurant, it's gonna be some form of violence somewhere. But we stand on top of it to eliminate the violence. It may turn into an argument, but we defuse it to keep it from turning into fights and shootouts. It has been situations that happen at Pablo's, but nothing dramatic. Nothing while I was there. Nothing while I was there. When I became the head of security guard, all of that stopped. All of that stopped. When people go out in the lot, it's hard for us to control that because we're not officers. 
if I go out in the lot and I get into it with somebody in the lot, then I'm just as much as wrong as they are. But we exit them out the building and make people leave the building. Like that, that brings everything to me. And like I said, come tomorrow morning, I have nothing. I have nothing because Pablo is closed. And I'm just coming to find out, like, are we going to get a chance to open? Do we get a chance to come back? Do I get my job back? What am I to do? Like, I'm not here to bash anybody. I'm not here to talk wrong or talk down to anybody. As most of you all in here, y'all know me. I've been in Dalton for a long time. Like, I used to do security for secrets. I worked for uh, the owner of Pablo's across the street at the store. Like, security is what I can do with my situation. Other spots, not to put nobody else's business out there. It's not equipped for me to go in there because there's too much going on. I can't deal with all that. I'm not here to fight nobody. I'm not here to pull guns on nobody. I'm not licensed to carry a firearm, so I can't deal with none of that. Pablo's is a safe haven compared to a lot of things that's going on. Like, I know a lot of stuff and a lot of people went down. Compared to a lot of things and a lot of businesses that's going on, we're kind of one of the safest places there. Some of you all have been up there, and y'all see that we run it. We keep it straight. We try to make everybody safe. Our goal is come in, have fun, go home. Sir, you've reached your three minutes. I just wanted to address you all for that. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Hello, my name is Andrea Thomas. I'm also security for Pablo's. Um, like my former um, security said that Pablo's is a safe haven for all of us. I lost my husband four months ago. Um, we worked at Pablo's seven days a week together, front door doing security. Um, it was hard coming back, but because we've gained a family with the customers, with security, um, it helped me grieve through my husband's death. Um, I have five kids. I'm a single mother. Um, I did it seven days a week. Seven days a week, Pablo also helped me do the funeral. Um, everybody that worked with me was there. They still there. I need it to help me grieve through all of this. Yeah. Um, so we are looking forward to Pablo's openings, hopefully soon. <laughs> um, we need it. We, we keep the customers safe. We keep ourselves safe. I look forward to go home to my five kids every day safely. So when everybody come in there, we make sure we do our job correctly because we are, our life is also at stake when they come in there. Um, my customers love me. <laughs> they love me up there. Um, they love my other security guards. We need it. We love Pablo. We are a big family up there, you know. And um, I could work other places, but I don't. I love Pablo's. I'm also a part of Casey's bodyguard security search and rescue. Um, so, you know, he helps. He comes up there. You know, he'll, he bodyguards me also because um, my husband's killed, you know, and he was security. So um, he helps me make sure I'm safe. You know, even though I'm security, I have security. And I'm also a part of his security. So um, we need it. Our customers call me all the time asking when they open <laughs> because they, they don't want to go anywhere else. You know, they know that we keep them safe. They say every time we see you and your husband, we knew we were safe. You know, and he's gone now, so they still come up there and support Pablo. They love Pablo. Pablo is up there with us every day. You know, he's awesome. His team, our team is awesome. We need it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Good evening. My name is Asmar Kelly. I'm also a security guard at Pablo's. I've been doing security for quite a while now. And at Pablo's is different because our relationship is different. Like, we all care about each other for real. We call each other when something's wrong. We call each other, talk to each other about it. At work, is more work. But after work, we also kick it with each other like a real family. Since I've been working at Pablo's, I never had that structure at any other job I worked at. And since he's been closed, I don't work. I told my wife, like, I'm sitting on the bench right now. Our team's on suspension. Mm -hmm. Like, we do need Pablo because he made it so that we are comfortable at work. I don't worry about no one not doing what they're not supposed to do because we all know what we're supposed <clears throat> to do. 
He's a good man. The business helps us a lot. And without that business, a lot of us are going to fall down. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm also an employee at Pablo's. Everything my coworkers have said, um, of course, is true. Um, this has taken a toll on a lot of us. There's a lot of us here today. Um, George gave everyone opportunity for employment. That's what I like about him. We are a family. Um, nothing is perfect. Of course, it comes with working in an environment. Um, I have a part-time job work for at its home health care. So I do dimension all time home care. Mm -hmm. um, but I really need my job. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, trustees, residents. My name is George Messi, the owner of Pablo's Cafe and Bar, located on 1115 East Sibley. Just a little background. I was the owner of Dalton Food and Liquor since 1992, the store across the street from this village hall. Until 2017, I was in that store for over 22, 23 years. My record always been clean with the police department, with the village. I never had an underage ticket. I left that place in 2017 and I came back to Dalton in 2020 during COVID. I got my tavern license from the previous administration. So I opened the place on Sibley and since day one, safety was the priority for that location. Every night we have multiple security. You go in, you leave, they search you every time you walk in the place. 2021, 2022, village renewed my license. No problem. I got my license first week of May. This year, I gave them all my paperwork in April. The license due April 30th. My liquor state license valid until 2024. My gaming from the Illinois Gaming Board valid until 2024. So I kept go back and forth to this village hall almost every single day. Mr. Freeman, he see me, he see my wife. We here every single day, May, June, no answer. Right after 4th of July, July 5th at 6 p.m., the police came. They said, we have to shut you down for not having a local license. You have all my paperwork since April. I'm waiting on you to get my license. You're the one who holding it. So I'm just asking the mayor, the trustees, please, when can I have a definite answer to get my license and get this place back open? Between DJs, security, bartenders, we have over 25 employees that they depend on this job. So please, just give us a definite date. I talked to Mr. Freeman a few times. I talked to the gentleman, Mr. Moore. They keep saying, they'll call you. Nobody get back with us. So please, we need your help to get this plaque back open. Thank you. If anybody else have anything to say, can you line up here? Because we're going to cut the public comment off. All right. So let's go. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor, Trustees, Tom Folk. Uh, it's now been a little over a month since my last appearance here. This is my 128th uh, town hall meeting, second in this great city. And, of course, your Honorable Mayor, I'm here to ask about the business license renewals, specifically for 44 Sibley Boulevard. Uh, we have done, I, I personally have done 106 communications with mayor's office, Mr. Moore here physically, emails, phone calls to Mr. Delgado, 
76 of them to be exact, without a single call returned. My question is tonight, and I like tonight's vibe because it seems to be interactive, where you know questions back and forth are being answered. I was wondering how long, how much longer we have to wait, and if anybody has an answer. This is the renewal of business license. I just want to be clear: is this talking about a liquor license? Because it, it's overall, say, yeah, it, it, so it the liquor license, it. okay. It so is. that's in the attorney's hands. I think I answered this last meeting. Um, mm -hmm. It's still in the attorney's hand. The attorney will be reaching out to anybody with a liquor license. Your Honor, I, I've called him 76 times. Not a, he said he would uh, have a, a decision for us three weeks ago. We have, and, and then you said something last meeting that some of these businesses owe money or back taxes. That's correct. If there's anything this business owes, we will triple what is owed. That's correct. There's, there's, do you know if that particular business owes any money? I do not know that at this moment. That's why I have an attorney's in. And how can so I get attorney, a hold of Mr. The, Delgado? You, you want me to respond or no? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sorry. So the attorney will respond. He will tell you guys what to do. Um, more than likely you will have a hearing and then you will know um, the status of your business. Uh, for those that keep coming to the podium, this is strictly about liquor license. We have not denied your business license, but if you have liquor in your establishment, um, everything's being looked at with anybody with a liquor license. So that's what we are with liquor establishment. Anybody holding a liquor license in Dalton. Thank you. And do you have any idea when so Mr. Delgado will get back? I just asked that. So there... Is that his leisure? It's in his, it's in his hands, and when he get mm -hmm. done with his investigation, he will call you. It's more okay, like because, an email app. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're not on equal footings, and we don't want to be uh, uh, victimized or, or uh, have revenge extended on us on this business license because we're speaking out, man. We don't want to be singled out at the end because it's not why uh, uh, this license was not renewed. It's how the other licenses were renewed. Nothing, nobody explained to us what triggered this special review, but it's under review. Nobody's telling us what money's being owed. We just want this license renewed, that's all. We're not lawbreakers. It's a very nice place. This, this town should be proud of this gas station. No, no uh, violations. Been there for 25 years. No back taxes. We just want to move things along, that's all. And I'll be back next month, or will Mr. Delgado return his calls? I've been speaking of Brandon every day. That's his secretary. That's how old this is getting. I'm sorry for my attitude, but people are losing their jobs over this. Businesses are closing down. The town folk are, are suffering as well. These are taxes that could be paid to the city. But thank you for your time, Your Honor, and I hope we get this moving along. Good evening, Mayor, trustees, residents. My name is George Messier, the owner of Pablo's Cafe and Bar, located 1115 East Sibley. I'm here tonight for the same reason I came three weeks ago for the last meeting. I'm asking about my license. No answer. We came to this village hall every single day. Called the attorney maybe more than 100 times. No answer. So when can we have an answer for this? I mean, we've been closed for a month now. This place, we have to pay $6,200 a month between rent and all expenses, and we've been closed. You close us down for not having a local license. You have all my papers since April. We're in August. How long this process is going to take? That's my question. I mean, can we have like a meeting between you, Mayor, the business owner, with the trustees, and we go through this? The trustee has nothing to do with liquor licenses. Okay. Who we need to, can we sit with you? Yes. And I just answered that with the last gentleman who has a gas station who sells liquor. So everybody's being evaluated. So the attorney will reach out to everyone that has a liquor license and talk to you directly. Okay, but he never pick up. He never answer. He will. He's still doing investigations. You know, we left so many messages for him with his, you know, assistant. He never called back. So, uh, you know, I know. Just give me 30 seconds. So when can we have a meeting, Mayor, to go through this? I will reach out to him and I will let you know. Well, you see, this is the same thing that happened last meeting. 
I know, just give me 30 seconds, please. I know, just 30 seconds more. So last meeting, Mayor, you said by Friday, the administrator, Freeman, he said, Friday, we're going to have everything done. Okay, Friday came, nothing happened. I come to this village, well, Mr. Moore, he see me every single day. How many times you see me a day? Maybe two, three times. Every single day I'm here. He said, in process. That's the only answer we hear from you, process. So nobody's giving us a definite answer. You have one. All right, thank you. Thank you. This is the gentleman or one of the business owners who came out and talked about their hardships of what they were going through. First of all, good evening, everybody, to give me the chance to become in Dalton Village Hall to be talk, and whatever I will talk is nothing but truth. I've been in this village, been 10 years, Miss Mayor. I never have any problem to be a disrespectful to my business, disrespectful to my neighborhood. I've been in this town, been 10 years, and the way I have revoked my license I've been paying my tax good. If I made a mistake, you have a chance to give me the chance to be, I can create my any mistake where I made it. I will try my best to be whatever the violation I have given on my paper is nothing but the lie. They say every time we have 15 to 20 police car come over there and helping us, that's not good. They never help us like that. And we never expecting. The last time what they give me ticket for $750, to be two girls argument of outside of my establishment. And this is the reason I have to revoke my license. I paying every month $8,000 rent. I have only one child, which one I'm taking care of it right now. I'm taking care of the another kids. I run more than 23 family house in Dalton. You're ruining your own people end of the day. And everybody get hurt is a small people is very important. Everybody run the life just because of the day having getting good pay from the good establishment. If the good establishment, good business not going to come in the Dalton, how is the Dalton going to survive? That's all I want to talk. I just want to be a fair justice, and I'm not trying to lose, revoke my license. I work hard for my money. And you really work hard for your money, and when you have to lose for no reason, it's hurt. It's nothing but hurt. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. All right, all right next. Mm. Next. If um, where is Pablo um, Case and Bar? Where is the actual where they're at today? I know it was just foul, but sometimes you know they do some fouling. Choose the court. Hold on a second. Log into face the system. Bear with me, guys. Mm, frequent ask questions. Why is giving me that new search? Party search. All right, give me one second. I'm doing a little quick search to see, can I see where this case is at? That's ridiculous that they have to go through this, spend their money to try to get their businesses up and going. So this is Pablo's Cafe, and I believe this was filed 3 one So Never all of thought these I was filed in March. That's when people pretty much got tired of it. And you think that's the gentleman who we just saw? Because he didn't tell us that his name was Pablo, but I, it could be him. Let's get to it. So this is the complaint. Um, jury trial. They already uh, jurisdiction. That's the venue giving them jurisdiction over the case. The parties, Pablo, defended village of um, Dalton. Local government, defended Tiffany Hillier, defended... Um, Miss Keys, the clerk, Village of Dalton, Police Department. Oh, damn. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. It's about to get good. The defendants, Lacey Lewis is a deputy of chief. He's named in this. And the Boards of Trustees is governed by. So not all of the names, but it did name the Board of the Trustees. These are the defendants in this case. These are the parties. They did not say the Board of Trustees are the defendants. They could be witnesses or something, but they named defendant as the Village of Dalton, Tiffany, um, Miss Keys, the Village of Dalton Police Department, Lacey, 
Lewis. Okay. Oh, wow. Other entries, Fox 32, Chicago News. Okay. Factual allegations. Let's get to it. Let me get comfortable. I got to cross my legs, y'all. Drink some water. Plaintiff um, began operating as a bar and restaurant in March 2020. Plaintiff has a Class D liquor license for the property, which allowed plaintiff to serve alcohol at the property. Plaintiff also has a village business license, which was also set to expire April 30th, 2023. All right. So the business license and liquor license collectively referred to as license. Plaintiffs also have a state liquor license that expired February 28th, 2025. I think this is it because allegedly that gentleman was still operating under his um, state license, all right? And a state gambling license, gaming license that expired December, 2024. Dalton is his home rule municipality within Cook County, Illinois with locate, local jurisdiction of issues or renewing license for establishing within the village code. So he's talking about local um, ordinance that has to do with his issues. Section 337 of the Village Code states that Class D license shall uh, Class D license shall authorize the sale and retail of consumption of license uh, alcohol liquor on a specified permit only as an indicated to the business, other than the sale of alcohol liquor, which is regularly licensed and operated as a business in chief of principal business or owner. So basically that it highlights that liquor license are disseminated based on a um, speci specified basis. Okay. You're going to have to meet some requirements. Okay. It's, it's areas you know, I think some places can't have liquor stores that's close to school perimeters. Those things, zoning plays a part in all that if you don't understand. So that's why this says this in legal terms. So it goes into the sections of village code section. The total number of class D license um, shall not exceed 11. So these are some of the criteria for him to be denied. If it was more than 11 liquor licenses in this area, you can't get one. So does that make sense? These are some of the things that you should know as business owners. What are your regulatory guidelines, what you can do and can't do in particular areas? So these are some of the things they highlight in, and I would assume that he's abiding by it. So let's go by, go on. On April 15, 2023, the painter filed an attempt to pay for the renewal application for the license with the village in the license in that the license was set to expire April 30th, 2023. The village accept the application consistent with the historical historical practice and the affirmed through verbal communication with the agent of the village. Plate that was allowed to continue to carry on its business pen, pending the insurance of the license. So this is why he was still able to practice also because he has state license too. In May 2023, one of Pablo's managers, George Michi, placed several telephone calls to the village to inquire about the status of the license. On several occasions, representative of the village did not answer the call. On other occasions, representative of the village stated that the person's license, the plaintiff license was in process pending or stated that the village will call you when it's ready. Mr. Meach was never told that there was any issues with the application for the license or the village was aware of anything that would impact plaintiff eligibility for renewal. Near the end of June 2023, following yet another inquiry from Mr. Meach, a village representative told Mr. Meach to call the village administrative Key Freeman mm, or the village attorney Delgado. In addition, Delgado principal Michael Delgado stated in the village board meeting that businesses owners could call Delgado about their license renewal. Mr. Michi then telephoned Freeman one on numerous occasions. Freeman, however, did not answer or return any of his calls. Mr. Meach also telephoned Delgado on numerous occasions. So he called Freeman and Delgado on numerous occasions, but was told that the law firm has nothing to do with the insurance of the license. So they were getting to run around. You see what they put in front of the board meeting to you? Like, well, this is who handling it. Everybody's like, okay, we have somebody handle it. And in the back end, they stressed out. And then they start calling the trustees. And that's where the trustees getting, getting the blunt end of this. 
So on July 5th, 2023, Village um, Inspector Kim, here she go. She's involved. These people, this Rico, especially we keep seeing these same names, allegedly. Even though they say Rico is not laws, allegedly. But they still applying it to people and trying to put people in jail. I don't even know how this works. We'll talk about Rico because Rico don't know how to act. But let's move on. On July 5th, 2023, Village Inspector Kim Austin telephoned Mr. Meach and stated, you need to clear, clear the bar. The police are on their way to shut you down for not having a license. 20 minutes after Meach received the Alton police call, PD officers Jermaine Lee and four to six other police officers arrived at the property. Lee told Mr. Meach, we are shutting you down for not having a local license, liquor license. Lee further said, go to the village hall tomorrow and talk to the um, DPD offer, uh, officers who arrived at the property on July 5th, 2023, did not have, did not give plaintiff any documents, official or otherwise regarding the closure, nor did the DPD officers affect any stickers or closure notice on the front of the door of the property or else. Now, this is the, uh, I think we showed this on one of our videos where um, shortly after this gentleman said that he was talking to the, talking to the office, like the FBI, because they was going around talking to people. He said that this happened. They ran down on the bar. So after this, I'm going to try to find a clip for you guys. Find a clip. Let me remember. Find a clip. And if y'all have anything in the comments, I'll read it afterwards because y'all know my ADHD kicking. I'll get distracted. Okay, we're going to read them. If you have anything to say, I'll read them afterwards. We'll get into it. So prior to July 5th, um, 2023, plaintiff has not been given notice that it might have been shut down for any reason that the liquor license has not been renewed, nor did plaintiff receive any update from the village concerning the status of the license. From July 6th, 2023 onward, Mr. Meach and his wife, Miss N Meach, Miss Meach, um, went to the village hall every day to speak to the village employees who could assist plaintiff with his license or explain the closure of the property. And at no time, Mr. Meach or Mrs. Meach given any answers about the renewal or the status of the application for renewal and licenses or any information concerning the forced closure of the property by the DPD. After July 5th, 2023 closure, plaintiffs sought and uh, filed an appeal of the closure with the Illinois Liquor Con uh, Control Commission. Plaintiff was, uh, plaintiff was closed by the DPD from July 5th to October 3rd. That's three months. Y'all see I count on my fingers. I don't care. That's a lot. And then you know he still have to pay rent on that property? So he don't lose his um, property. He don't break his lease if he don't own it. Do you know that? And not making no money. Wow. This is hurtful. On October 3rd, 2023, Robert Collins, former DPD. Oh, Mr. Collins. That's who he is. I think that's the, the chief of police. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look up those lawsuits. I say, say he got one. DPD chief of police sent an email to the DPD stating, please be advised that Pablo and Angels will be allowed to operate. Ooh, okay. While they were waiting for their hearing. Oh, that is exactly what Miss Nikita, Dr. Nikita was talking about. Because I said, what made them switch on Robert Collins, the original chief? And he wasn't complying with the flim flam, with the takeover with the bullying with the intimidation they were not doing this by law so he already knew no i am not involved in this he said let him know he could open his place there's no paperwork there's nothing i'm adding more to this i'm adding more to this but i i see what what happened do y'all see what happened so this was mm, okay in july 2023 miss meach mr meach that was july mr meach attended the monthly village board meeting we're gonna see can we pull that up hello july board meeting i was looking for where he was at Henry was present at the July meeting, and at the July meeting, Ms. Mr. Meach asked Henry about the status of plaintiff license. Henry responded that the village would would issue the license, but there 
were they were pending and would be issued soon once the village internal process was completed. In August 2023, Mr. Meach attended the monthly meeting in the village again. The August meeting, Henry was present at the meeting, and at the August meeting, Mr. Michi asked Henry about the status of the plaintiff license. Henry again responded to the village, responded that the village would issue the license, but they were pending and would be issued as soon as the village internal process was completed. In September 2023, this is ridiculous. Mr. Meach attended the monthly meeting, village meeting again. I think that was the ones that, that we had, a, I think we had. I think that was him. Um, the village board meeting. Henry was present at September's meeting. And at the September's meeting, Mr. Michi asked Henry about the status of the plaintiff license. Henry again respond that the village was issuing the license, but they had were pending and they had will be issued based on the village eternal process was completed. Again, giving him the rigmarole, the runaround, the bullshit, the 52 fake out. This man has a lot of patience. Grace Levi, I don't. I'm, I'm writing letters. I'm writing letters to everybody. I'm taking it to the governors. Everybody being CC. They're going to be like, who this crazy lady? Uh, baby, you going to know something not right. You're not going to stop mine. He has a lot of patience. Okay? This is, you see how long this process been going? Hmm. Okay. In October meeting, Henry was present. And at the October meeting, Mr. Minchie, Mr. Meach asked Henry about the status of the plaintiff license. Henry agree, again responded to the village, would issue the license, but they were pending and would issue based on the process. <sighs> April 30th, 2023 to November 2nd, 2023, plaintiff license were not renewed by the village. Plaintiff was not given an explanation for the delay in renewal of the license. Plaintiff was not given an explanation about um, DPD officers closing the property for not having liquor license. On November 2, 2023, Austin served plaintiffs at the property with a packet of documents which was received by the employee of plaintiff. Okay, so they okay. So what happened? Plaintiff was served with the certificate of receipt, which acknowledged the receipt of the attached notice of hearing, um, renovation, renewal of old business license, and notice of hearing on renovation of renewal of license. So they finally gave him a hearing in November two thousand and twenty-three. The certificate issued two case numbers. There they go. The caption of the certificate states that re-proceeding to revoke and non-renewal village of Dalton license for liquors. So they were seeking to revoke his license. Upon information and belief, no notice or charges bearing the case caption. So there was no prior notice warning like, hey, this was going on with you. This is why you're going to get your license revoked. And nothing. That's what you're saying. No, nothing came up. There's no attachment to to um, solidify the moving forward to even want to revoke it. Upon, okay, so that's what it is. Upon, um, upon information and belief, no notice or change bearing this, the case's caption in proceedings to revoke and not renew Village of Dalton business license and liquor license um, was ever served to plaintiff and that the case caption does not appear to have any documents. Mm. Attached to the certificate of notice of hearing for revocation and of renewal and a business license, you'll see caption reproceedings um, or non-review village of Dalton license. Let me see. There, this is an exhibit that goes with this. Okay, um, let's just keep reading. Upon that, and I don't want to go into this, but I think they have more personal information. I'll look to see if it's something that's important, but we just going to get to the nitty gritty because this is already really going into people's personal stuff when we read these cases, you know, and I'm not trying to put myself at a liability because I didn't look at those papers. You see what I'm saying? I can't blank everything that don't need to be blanked out. Those exhibits. Does that make sense? Because I'm, they want to, they want to put, you know, you know, tell people don't say anything. You're going to get a strike, all types of stuff. I'm just trying to come in on a good foot. Y'all already know that Grace Levi, if y'all don't know, I've been censored for a lot of years. If y'all go back into this page, it's been up for five years. So shout out to Dalton. Shout out to Jedediah. Shout out to this situation that's allowing us to catapult into the position that we need to be. And that's being here for the people to go over things like this so you can get a deep understanding of what the 
hell is going on in the background? You see what I'm saying? And we're going to talk about it from an intellectual, a little funny, and a little enlightening, you know, perspective. So let's get to it. We're going to get a little bit more down into this. So um, let's see. Upon information, so we're talking about a little bit of the law. The charge allegates 31 incidents. So they given the allegation of 31 incidents that the village um, complained warranted the re um, revocation and non-renewal of this plaintiff's license. The charging as per unconstitutional and the allegation it can contain within our purposeful extrigated and not related to the operation of the business. So basically, for example, that what he said, two girls was outside arguing and then he got this big old fine of $750 these type of things so they're trying to use those particular incidents to say it's his fault okay because he got liquor okay and these people acting up so that's what they're talking about these 31 incidents that they're allegedly bringing up that they can't even attach in paperwork has nothing to do with him the charges as per c unconstitutional and the allegations contained within it are unpurposed are purposefully extragated. So it's, it's like extubated. Excuse me, guys. I got a little list. Some words won't come out correctly, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so allegations on the charges include, but not limited to the following. So these are some of the allegations. Okay, let's get to it. On or about, I'm a little thirsty. Hit the like button, please, guys. Get Grace Levi in the algorithm if you like what we're doing. We're getting details of what's going on. Y'all need to help this brother. Whoever can, get that kitty together because y'all going to have to see this through, get this on a record. Don't let her settle. Don't let them settle, okay? Because once y'all put this on in, in the record and y'all win, people in other states can use this. They can use these cases as presidents, okay? You can use it to help each other. So on or about March 6, 2023, a woman complained to the village police that she was being threatened by a subject at the property. She was in a parking lot and she subject and it says subject threatened to shoot her. The call was determined to be unfounded. Okay. On and about the same day, January 28th, 2023, officers also received reports of shots being fired at the property. Upon arrival, a witness informed police a car drove past and was shooting in the air. On or about January 5th, 2023, a female called the police, asked for assistance because she forgot where she parked her car. She sound highly intoxicated. I'm reading it because y'all know this is some nonsense, right? A friend eventually, I'm reading it like that. A friend eventually found her in the vehicle. On or about December 8th, 2022, the village was notified that an employee of the plaintiff was having an anxiety attack in her car. Lastly, on or about November 1st, 2022, the village performed a wellness check for a woman who had a seizure. She refused medical attention. These are some of the incidents. I can keep reading. On or about August 30th, 2023, a woman alleged that her child's father was inside the property with her seven-year-old daughter. The complaint further reported that her child father was harassing her and trying to take her keys. On or about the same day, June, June 18th, 2022, a woman complained that the security guard at the premises threw her to the ground and... She feared for her life. This woman was determined to be unruly patriot and had been drinking. Okay. So these are some of the things that they had charged this man with. Obviously, you see, that has nothing to do with him. Maybe it had to do with the liquor he sold. But if you decide to drink spirits, you're going to act a fool. That has nothing to do with the liquor store. That means that we can blame the liquor stores and the gun manufacturers on, you know, the tragedies that they cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds not about right. Now, the village has a finite, infinite number of about 11, 11 class D liquor license. See the village code. So 11 upon inf information and believe the village liquor um, license have all been issued as such. No new class D license have been issued unless the existing class D license and non-renewal is revoked. Plaintiff, despite requesting Hingard and Hingard office, did not donate to Hingard in the most recent village mayor election. Ooh, they're putting this on record. 
The FBI going to use this. Mm -hmm. You better not settle. They still can use it. It's just not going to be on public records for us. You better not settle. Okay, because you acquiesce to this shit right there. So upon information and belief, um, yeah, information and belief, Hingard has a pattern and practice of non-renewing or moving to revoke businesses license or liquor license from her political rivals, though she views as disloyal and those who did not donate to her mayoral campaign or foundation. Upon information and belief, Hingard is seeking to revoke painted liquor license so that Hingard can issue the license to her cousin. Wow, Kamal Woods. Woo, this getting a little spicy. I mean, this is going to get a little spicy. See, this is when the nepotism come in. And this is exactly what was happening in Newark, where the, man the mayor was selling the properties for cheap to his friends. And that's how he went to jail. Don't worry, Dalton. She set herself up for failure. So Kamal Woods, you wanted everything that he already built up, everything he fixed in that place. That's what you were trying to do? That man spent thousands of dollars there? And, and you try to take it. Dirty, rotten scoundrel. Let's get to it. So upon in, 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 um, information and belief, Henyard is seeking. So this is just circumstantial. Okay, that's why I said information and belief. Henyard is seeking to revoke plaintiff liquor license so that Henyard can issue the license to her cousin, associate Kamal Woods. Upon information and belief, Woods is currently developing a commercial real estate project that will require a class d liquor license upon information and belief hinger cousin is currently developing a commercial real estate project that will require a class d liquor license upon information the belief hinger is seeking to not renew or revoke the plaintiff's liquor license for one of the three reasons all which may be true one, so Henry could issue the license to the entity owned or controlled by mr woods or and her cousin in retaliation to plaintiff refusal to donate to Henyard mayoral campaign or and three so that Henyard could somehow profit from issuing one of the village for an infinite number of liquor license so either way she was going to issue it and it sounds like she had a plan for that property I'm telling y'all, Grace Levi is psychic. I'll be putting context clues together. I'm like, yo, she trying to take people property. And the bad thing is that it seems like the people are fixing it up a little bit or trying to, and they're putting money in it. And it's like, they want to scoop it right from under them. That's terrible. Terrible. Regardless of Henry's motive, Henry used the charge of non-renewal or revoking planted business license to cause, to cause a re- Recondemption to the render, recondemption. I do apologize to the render as both a plaintiff's license without him. Your first holding a hearing as the local liquor commission regarding plaintiff liquor license. So, re before revocation can go, you have to have a hearing. Also, you have to have some evidence. And what she brought up was no evidence. What they had, they just had probably had a list of some things, but they didn't have any paperwork to, um, to circumcised what they were saying, why they weren't renewing his license. The village initially did not serve plaintiff with a notice or opportunity from hearing regarding plaintiff liquor license. So that Henyard could use the uh, remedy regarding plaintiff business license to use or misuse her authority as a local liquor commissioner to revoke plaintiff liquor license without a hearing or requiring the village code section 3-317. So not only is she the mayor, this lady and administrator, she also the commissioner of the liquor, liquor commission in there. Oh my God. How did she get so far, y'all? That's what I told y'all. She's not dumb. Do not think that this young lady is stupid by far. This is how she's been getting away. And I do believe she has connections. It makes sense. So attorney Michael uh, Casper was appointed as a hearing officer for the proceeding. Upon information and belief, Henry appointed Casper as the hearing officer. Delgado act as the attorney prosecuting the charge on behalf of the visitor. Um, village. I do apologize. Casper has previous representative Henry personally and has acted as lead counsel in matters Henry versus municipal office 
of Village of Dalton. This was 2022. I wonder what that's about. Casper did not disclose his prior representation of Henry to the plaintiff, and the plaintiff filed a motion for disqualification. Casper as a hearing officer as soon as it was discovered. Good job. There go the the bot. There they go go to set up. So Casper was assigned to be the hearing officer, and as you say, see, he used to work with Henry. He used to represent her, which create a great line of bias. Great job for you guys going back and really doing your due diligence because these are some of the things how we get the wool pull, pulled over these eyes. Uh, 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 these people are connected. So Casper denied the plaintiff motion to disqual disqualify on January 2024. Casper also has a co-counsel relationship in other matters with Delgado, which Casper also failed to disclose. Casper and Des Delgado principal Michael Delgado served as town of Ciro trustee. Ciro, y'all know what that is? That's another town out there. Casper and Delgado acted as co-counsel on, including but not limited to La Plata Ciro Inc. versus town Ciro. So it's some business out there. So they're, they're highlighting a case. One, two, three, four cases that Casper and Delgado was in it together. And these are the same people who Henry put over this case to revoke this man liquor license. She said, I was going to win by all means. Hmm. Upon information and belief, Casper and Delgado was both hired in 2022 by Elk Grove Village regarding an anonymous billboard. Another connection. A hearing was held on the charges on January 26 to revoke the non-renewed plaintiff business license only. Plaintiff has not yet received a hearing transcript because he wants uh, he probably is going to appeal it. And at the hearing, the following DPD officers were called to testify in support of Jason Mathis testified testify that he responded to a call to the plaintiff's premises several times a month and that such incidents were for some type of fight, shots, fire, or whatever. So they were trying to use the officer's testimony as an exhibit. But where is the paperwork? Uh-huh. Where's the paperwork? So they were using allegedly these crooked police to come and testify. And that really makes me feel away, guys, because mm -hmm, I lost a court case. It's all tickets, y'all. I'll be fighting tickets. And because the officer made a testimony, I said, we don't have any evidence here. The officer's testimony is just as good as evidence. Excuse me? So my testimony should be good as evidence. Oh, Jesus Christ. So that's what they were trying to do here. Mm -hmm. Crookedness. So um, it says, Kaylin Clark testified at the hearing, but her testimony was not addressed in the uh, revocation order denied. So I don't know. That's the clerk. She's probably talking about paperwork. Testify. Okay. So this was um, Hera. Harana. Please excuse my pronunciation. Harana. This is another individual. Testify. He went to the property more than 10 times in 2023. This is, must be another officer and responded to incidents that took place in the parking lot. These are other officers. These officers testimonies. And I want to see the paperwork. I don't care about your testimony. So all the rest of them is officer testimonies. I'm not trying to read that. I know I sound a little bit biased, but at the end of the day, if you're not showing the paper and these calls coming in with transcript, I'm not trying to hear. Mm -mm. All right. So let's go into let's what else. So upon information and beliefs, the testifying officers did not testify as they as any specific date, times, names of complaint parties, of any other relevance foundational information that would support the testimony. You see why I didn't even read it? I figured I'm not about to waste my time. They didn't have any paperwork. But they were here and thought that just on the validity of their words, that they were just going to be okay. So the majority of what the testi testifying officer testified to um, occur in the parking lot of a um, parking lot of the property, which is located in multiple business commercial strips, malls, or general vicinities in um, streets in front or behind of the property. Upon information and belief, clerk testified in a manner that 
was completely inconsistent with the testifying officers. So that's why they want to hear what the clerk got to say. She was telling the truth, stated that she either did not remember any of the incidents that Delgado inquired with her about, or those instances did not occur. Miss Meach, Miss Mr. Meach also testified at the hearing and testified that the police were only present at the property 10 or 12 times per year. On February 20th, 2024, Casper issued a recommendation under the case number yeah, 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 to revoke plaintiff business license. Mm -hmm. Casper, bias, crooked, that was working with him year before. This is who revoked his liquor license. <laughs> On February 20th, 2024, Casper also issued a recommendation under the case number uh, 2023 uh, LL10 to revoke plaintiff liquor license, liquor recommendation attached. Mm. Casper issued the liquor recommendation even though no notice was served for the case number. Hearing only concerned plaintiff business license and the hearing was never held in front of the local liquor commission to revoke plaintiff liquor license. The whole was a sham. It was not handled right um, by law. And that's the same thing. That's what the trustee has been complaining about. She is not following administrative procedure. This is one of the things I just want to explain to you guys. A lot of criminals beat cases because of administrative procedures that they're supposed to file papers at certain times. Certain particular papers are supposed to be filed at certain time. Certain case references or case references and evidence is supposed to be filed. Like, let me give you an example. The Tasha K um, thing with her and Cardi B. Why she lost her appeal or power filing because that the person who filed it didn't file the paperwork right. They, and they also did not put on public record that they would appeal and didn't get that on the transcript. So with certain things that's called administrative process that must occur for these things to be legal or they're going to be voided. And what Tiffany Henyard, what I seem to notice is what she's doing is she's not following administrative protocol. And that's what's putting her in a bind. She just don't realize that she thinks she can do what she want to do, but she's fucking up. OK, he's going to win this case. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Ma, ma, ma. So, although the recommendations did not reference the testimony of the clerk, because the clerk told the truth, she was like, I don't know none of this. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. They're making stuff up as they go, allegedly. So, Miss Meach's testimony and the clerk's testimony both contradicted the testimony of the testi testifying officers. Casper found Miss Meachy, Miss Mr. Meach, not credible. For the sole reason that Mr. Meach's testimony was stark contrast of the officer's testimony in the allegations in paragraph 32, meaning our words mean nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. Welcome to America. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. In other words, Casper would not find Mr. Meach credible unless he testified consistent with the charges. Casper further, further held the description of the other businesses in the strip mall supported that the findings at the parking lot incident, particularly the late night fights and shooting, were related to plaintiff and not the other businesses that had closed hours earlier. Upon information and belief that the testifying officers did not lay any foundational or certain uh, certainly did not present any documents that would show the time of any of the allegation incidents occurred to support the inference that the plaintiff was the party that could have been responsible for the occurrence in the parking lot shared by several commercial businesses. Casper concluded that in order for Mr. Michi's testimony to be credible, the hearing officer will have to conclude that the village and each of the testimony testifying officers were completely fabricated. Much of the allegations against. So he said, you got to be lying because if I say that you're telling the truth and officers telling the law, I'm saying that they fabricating and we can't put that on record. We can't put that all of these officers fabricated. Because that will make any case that they ever testify for prior will be able to be challenged. Do you understand that? This meter freaker. I'm sorry. This is so crooked. This is how he found that his liquor license should be shut down because he didn't testify in concurrence or exactly what the officer said. This is an example of being railroaded. 
pray for Dalton, y'all. Pray for Dalton. Could y'all handle this type of stuff? Could you endure this? Especially as a business owner, you don't work for nobody. This is your primary income. You got kids in college, kids in school, things going on, insurance. Could you handle this pressure? Man, I've been stressed out. It's making my stomach hurt. My stomach cramping up, feeling upset right now. So the village board meeting is scheduled for February 19, 2024, was canceled, and the village board therefore did not vote on the business uh recommendation. So them to be back on to um right standing. Upon information and belief, the village which would not have voted against the business recommendation by the vote of four to three. It is commonly understood that certain village trustees are loyal to Hingard and other four are opposed of her agenda and that the actions taken by her in the mayor um and the action that's taken by her in the mayor more generally so they're saying that these are uh four trustees that they know that actually don't stand with the mayor and her shenanigans oh that save y'all guys for being in that racketeering case they they trying to set y'all up to save you oh y'all oh y'all um her What's her name? Miss um, Burns, is that her name? She was up there talking about, I'm not, I didn't steal nothing. I ain't spend nothing. I ain't had nothing in no cards. I, listen, she clear her damn name. She don't want to have nothing. Rico, if they were to apply this, is so general. Just getting off of this because I'm going back and forth. Rico is so general that me and you cannot know each other. But if this business is corrupt and I'm the person that's shipping out their products and I don't know his drugs, I don't know what it is. And you the person who's providing a piece of the chemical, just one part of it, just manufacture it for them. And you send it to the chemical company. Do you know all of us will be charged in that Rico case? Huh? I don't know you. You don't know me. That's how Rico work. OK, it's implied. Is implied intent and in, in, implied criminalism to a conspiracy to conspire to deceive and people all you don't have to know each other just to let you know that so that's why the trustees are talking the way they're talking just listening to what they're saying they're trying to pull themselves out of this so on the same it says on february 19th chicago visit uh fox chicago visit plaintiff at the property this is what we were talking about so on february 19 2024 fox chicago visit plaintiffs at the property to inquire about allegate allegations that the plaintiff license were being held up for political reasons on the same night of february 19 2024 Fox Chicago broke the story that the uh, that agents from the Federal Bureau of Investigation had questioned at least a half a dozen, including business owner from Dalton employees and the elected official as part of the investigation into Hingard. On February 20th, one day later, the same Fox Chicago report drove to visit the property again and, and was followed by the DPD. These They were following the news people you see why i want to keep my eye on what's going on with these cops out there they're not even only intimidating the old people they were trying to intimidate the news reporters on february 20 of 2024 lacy and other police pd officers arrived at the property after following fox chicago to the property and gave mr meach the findings of facts and orders for the case number um so this is the revocation order. The revocation order stated that it is coming to be heard pursuant of the notice. So now this is when they give them the notice, like we're going to have a hearing. Um, the revocation order used the case um, caption re in re-proceedings to revoke or to non-renew. So this is what they were talking about. And this is when he got presented. Lacey stated to Mr. Meach that if he did not sign the revocation order, that he would be arrested. That is intimidation. That is intimidation. And Cole, you don't have to sign that. Yeah, they can't, they can't lock you up for like, sometimes you like when you don't sign the ticket, they said they can either bring you in to see a judge right away. That ticket is in exchange for you having a direct hearing. But that's a, that's, that's a, I don't even think tickets is criminal violations to me, but that's what they consist consider it. This is not a criminal violation. So I don't even understand why they would threaten to arrest this man. So the revocation order was signed by Hinger and pursuant to authorization of revocation pursuant to the village code. 
So this is the revocation appeals that he put in for his liquor license. Um, the revocation order attached to the liquor recommendations, what they recommend him to do. I think we're going to do a part two to this. Somebody's protecting her. There's no way that she's able to get away with blatantly doing things like this. You're not even following the standard protocol to serve someone with a revocation of license. This is standard. This is standard. She's, these are the things that she's doing. So we're going to follow up with this um, because there's a lot more to this. We're on, we're on page 18. This goes to 22, but this is actually the first filing. I could not be here breathing and be comfortable if I was really as bad as they was making, you know, and nobody could be around me. So for me to be this calm, I must have some kind of inner peace. And my inner peace is knowing that once everybody take the time to really see what type of person I am, you'd be surprised that I stuck around this long. I have to make the life that I do live as happy as I can and try to do the best with what I have. Do, you know, live the best life I can live, be as happy as I can be. N nothing is perfect for anybody. I don't know. What was I swear? I think I figured it out. You know why they don't want us redneck brothers and sisters and the hood brothers and sisters getting along? You know why? Because we'd be unstoppable. I'm telling you right now, we would shut shit down. The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.